Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Sorry for the technical difficulties. <laughs> no worries. No worries. It happens. It happens. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, we are honored to have you uh, spend your time with us this evening. And uh, I know you only have a short window, so I'll make sure that we keep to our schedule. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know, Nicole Brown has recently been um, promoted to president of Sony's TriStar Pictures, and we are so, so thrilled for you. She is also daughter of Multiracial Americans of Southern California founder, Nancy Brown. So thank you. Thank you again for joining us today. My pleasure. <laughs> so first question that we wanted to ask you today is, what was it like growing up <laughs> in multiracial Americans of Southern California community? You know, we've been around for 30 years, not to date anyone, um, <laughs> but uh, we, you know, it, it seems that you were one of the very first members uh, and, and obviously our, our very first family. So would love to know how, um, what that was like. I was very young when it, <laughs> um, when it began. And my memories are really about the inception of it, the first moments of it. I, I remember my living room on a Saturday being taken over by intelligent, creative, excited, colorful people wow. um, who seemed super passionate about figuring out how to build a community. Um, and this was Saturday morning when usually I'd watch my cartoons, right. but the room was <laughs> taken over. So I, I'm sort of peaked because I had nothing else to do. And I, I just, I, I saw so much planning and so much passion and um, um, and I, I remember figuring out like what the logo of mask would wow. look like and the, the, the images of the masks and 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 I remember the excitement for the first annual conference I think it was I think it was called kaleidoscope I think. oh yeah <laughs> yes and I remember folding the pamphlets and I remember I, I believe it was held in Culver City at this at, at the veterans memorial building and I remember being so proud of seeing the, the this group that had started in a living room gather with with a larger community and and have different rooms of different information and and it, it it kind of evolving from that into picnics and holiday parties and and right. social gatherings and celebrating people who publish books and and it was just it was a beautiful I say very intelligent, very sensitive, very progressive community. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think I'm spoiled. I think I, <laughs> I take it for granted that I got to see so many colors of brown, so many colors of yellow, so many beautiful mixtures of, of ethnicities together yeah. and families where no one looks like each other. And it was so normal to me. It right. was so, it was like, of course. Right. <laughs> like, what if anybody looks the same that's weird right that's weird. <laughs> and so i felt i was really nurtured at a at a young age by diversity and by um m true multiracial identity right. um and love and community mm -hmm. so um um I think it, I, I, I know now how lucky I am right. and how comfortable the organization helped me to feel in my own skin. Um, and I'm very grateful for my mother that this was her passion and that kind of have, feeling the responsibility probably starting, probably, this was always in her DNA. Right. Um, but, but as a mother saying, I never want my children and, and, and their generation to feel like they don't matter and they're not seen. Right. So to be, to be a part of the birth of, of an organization like this was really special. And, and then to see it evolve and to see, um, I remember even when I was in college, uh, I went to Columbia University and my, my mother had come to visit and she was sharing 
in a room with, I was like doing work study. I worked in the women's department and, and she came in and she was sharing some of the, some of the political activism she was doing with working with changing the census. And she, she'd yeah. just been dealing with all of that. And I remember the girls who I worked with were like, wait, you, <laughs> you and your people have, <laughs> have changed the census right. you know and I Amazing. And again it's like when you grow up with this you're like oh whatever right but, but but when you when you take a step back or when you look at it from someone else's point of view you realize how incredible it really it is. is um and it's and it started just from loving people mm. wanting to create a sense of community with each other right right and it's, it's, you know, one of the topics that we've been talking about over this, over this past year has been about legacy and, um, you know, and, and what that means to us and what that, you know, what that meant to our parents and what, you know, what that may mean to our children. And thinking about Nancy, it feels like, um, you know, and multiracial Americans that this, that, that, that belonging um, is, is her legacy. And it seems like even, you know, what you're doing in your life as well, like that, that seems to be where you're going also. <laughs> Um, it will be amazing to see um, how things continue. Um, I was speaking on uh, identity, I mentioned that earlier. I would love to know, um, you know, how has your identity evolved over the years? Growing up in the kind of, it sounds like a, a bit of a, a utopia of um, multiracial Americans and also being in California, um, you know, it's a, it's a luxury. Yeah. Um, and just as curious, you know, you went to Columbia, like how, how, has, your, how has your identity evolved? I, I think utopia is a good word because <laughs> I do think Nancy and my father really tried to build a utopia and tried to give me the a very strong sense of self of all my identities mm -hmm. so that I could go out into the world and represent. Yes. Um, and that I didn't feel insecure in, in either identity mm -hmm. um, and therefore the world couldn't pick me apart right right but <laughs> the world is a powerful place um and you know i think as anyone who who is contemplating who they are mm -hmm. and what it feels like to be that person within different environments you mm -hmm. kind of lean one way or lean the other right. um and experiment with like what you want to be and, and how right. you want to be perceived. Um, so I think I've, 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 exp it's, it's a hard question to ask. It is. It is. Um, but I, all I'll say is I think that now I feel really, again, I've gone through all my phases, right? <laughs> but I, I, I think I, I think again, I'm very comfortable in my identity, and I feel like the world is catching up now. It's Whereas crazy. before, maybe I was a little ahead of my time. Yes, I was a little bit. I was so comfortable being all these things, and people were like, "Well, you can't be that. You you must be <laughs> black on the outside and white on the inside without voice, or you know, like whatever it was." And and just being like, "That's the stupidest thing I ever heard." Right. But but. But now, um, I think the world understands multiracial identity more um, and is comfortable with it in a way that we've never seen before. And there's still so much work to do, so I don't take anything for granted. But I, I'm excited with where we're going right. in terms of the conversation about identity. Yeah, I think so too. And, um, you know, I, I see that Thomas has commented that, uh, you know, it's a journey. And um, Nicole is saying, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Sonia, president of Mass Now, is saying, Nicole, this resonates so much with me. Thank you for sharing. Um, and, and I think I, definitely what you shared resonated with me. Um, I feel like I've gone through my phases. And, um, you know, and, and um, I think that in life, in my own experience, you know, coming into motherhood has also brought a new identity um, element that I, I wasn't aware of. And also, um, you kind of, uh, I find it like I'm reliving a little bit of things that I've already gone through. Um, 
with, with my child, which is, is just kind of surreal. And that's, and then that, sometimes it's, it's, it's beautiful. Other times it can also be heartbreaking moments, but um, for the most part, it's, it's been great. Well, I think parenthood is really interesting because you're trying to course correct or you're trying to anticipate like what's going to hurt, what's going to be hard, what's going to, what do they need? What equipment, what tools does, does my kid need based on everything I know? And so right. you might be overcorrecting or you might be projecting too much. Um, and, and so it's just really, while you think you're caring about your child, mm -hmm. being a parent sort of forces you to, to, to take care of yourself again. Um, you know, if you're, if you're doing it the right way, um, you'll be, you'll become aware. Oh, I don't need to put all that on my babe. Like, right. I, this, this is, this is about me. And let me think about that. So it's like a second, a second chance at evaluation and reflection. And, um, a, I think having a multiracial identity, being in a multiracial partnership, mm -hmm. there's a huge responsibility um and you know sometimes i look at people who are in multiracial families who don't think about it as right. responsibly as this community does right. and i get very judgy yeah <laughs> um, um, i'm like well, they need to like make sure they're doing this to make sure they're doing that but you know everybody does it their own way but i think this community is is gorgeous because i think nurturing our identity is so important to create healthy people yes. and people who can go out into the world and then be kind to others. Yes. So it's, it's, um, it's a, this is a very special thing. Um, and, and, you know, we've, there's so much talk about, I see you. Yeah. And I think this group has said, I see you since the beginning. Um, because this has been a very, invisible identity for a mm -hmm. long time it's been a confusing identity um for the world to understand but um yeah uh kind of watching this organization evolve um has been really really special bringing it back to that first question yeah thank you so much for sharing on that, that was, like i said that was beautiful um the uh another question that we had was um you know where do you feel that your identity has played a role in your career path? You know, being the first uh, black woman to be president of this TriStar Pictures, do you feel that that's, that identity has played a role in, in helping you navigate your way? I thought about that before we started. Mm -hmm. And I actually strangely was, was reminded of my college essay. Oh. Uh, losing my power i am just not a technical <laughs> person hold on um the the essay was about feeling like a starfish mm. and what's interesting identifying with the starfish and what's interesting is the starfish their limbs can constantly be cut off but they grow back really fast wow. um and and i feel like being a multiracial person, being someone who chooses to identify as more than one thing, being someone who chooses to do things that maybe other people haven't done before, your, your limbs will constantly be cut off. You will constantly be um, told no, it will hurt sometimes, but what I was raised in, the community I was raised in, the parents that I had allowed me to, to keep to keep growing, to keep those arms growing out. And I think, I think there is a connection between the power of my identity and the power of the support I was given mm -hmm. and the ability to kind of forge a path um, and be the first of something. Um, I just didn't bother to say I couldn't do it. I didn't bother <laughs> to let not seeing someone who looked like me make a difference. I was right. just like, oh, I'm going to do that too. I'll be there. Um, <laughs> now, I'm not saying I've always imagined that this was exactly where I would be today. Right. Um, but I think, I think a little fearlessness and a little bit of knowing that people like us beat to the 
walk to the beat of our own drum right um is is and should be very empowering mm -hmm. um and it should we should feel that we've got a little bit of a superpower um and that we don't have to play by everybody's rules and and we can create our own definitions i love that I love that. And I love the uh, starfish analogy. Um, that, it makes so much sense. It really does and resonates. Well, um, the last uh, question that we had is, um, you know, what advice would you offer to multiracial individuals that are navigating their way through their identity? You know, do you have any, any expertise to share life experience? Well, I don't know, maybe a little bit of the things I've said before, but I also have no expertise. Uh, I just have life the way we all have our lives and our experiences. But what I'll say is, um, be bold, be, be you and, and now more than ever, everyone will figure it out around you. The world will follow. Um, and I think that, um, I think that can translate to our um, professional life, our personal life, our creative life, our intellectual life, and our identity. Um, and, and I think we're seeing people become disruptors. Mm -hmm. and and be rewarded for that and so i would just say to my multiracial community let's push the boundaries of what people think is safe for us to be and instead let's define ourselves and um continue to be trailblazers in terms of identity i mean identity is such a powerful issue right now but such a powerful topic Mm -hmm. And if you think about the conversations that this group was having very early on, can I be more than one thing? Can I, how can I possibly check this one box right. when my mother's this and my father's this? Or, or we, we've, we've always been atypical, you know, we've never been normal. And I think that's such a good thing. So, so we should just continue to um, be trailblazers. For, for every, for, for all kinds of identity issues and topics. I love that. I love that. And then, uh, sorry, last thing was just, are you, um, you know, I read this quote uh, online that you had shared. It was in regard to being named as president of TriStar. And you said, it's such an honor to be here furthering TriStar's impact with our new slate of bold, culturally re relevant and filmmaker driven content. And I thought that was incredibly powerful. And um, just had wanted to know if you could give us any um, any insight on some of the projects that you have either in the works or something that you had worked on already that you just are incredibly proud of. We'd love to know. Um, uh, I just this uh, past holiday season released a film that I'm really proud of uh, called The Happiest Season. Ooh. And what 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 for me was really special is it was the first. Uh, romantic holiday rom-com featuring an lgbtq couple um so on one hand it was incredibly classic and familiar and um uh in 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 the in the wonderful uh following in the wonderful tradition of holiday films but in another way it was so bold um and we were rewarded for being bold and and pushing representation further and uh it did it we try start partnered with hulu during the pandemic to make sure that everyone could see the film safely um and it was one of the biggest films uh that hulu had ever released um it also did incredibly well internationally so that's that's one film i'm very proud of we're we're right now um almost uh getting ready to shoot uh a, a very big musical that we're making in in a uh, partnership with Netflix called Matilda. Oh. And what I love about Matilda, um, if anybody's read the Roald Dahl book or yeah. seen the, the musical, mm -hmm. is at its core, it's a story about winning and triumphing over bullies. 
yeah. and using our intelligence as our weapon and yeah. creativity as our tools. And so um, that's a very uh, special piece that has themes that are close to my heart that I want to empower families and young people with. Mm -hmm. um, and that will be a very big film when it's released, um, when we're finished. And then um, later this year, I'll be doing a film called I Want to Dance with Somebody, which is ah. me, uh, uh, <laughs> a musical biopic of the Whitney Houston story yeah. um, with a lot of similar, with a lot of the uh, creative team from Bohemian Rhapsody, wow. where it will be just a wonderful celebration of the, uh, of the, of the epic uh, legacy of Whitney. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then I've got some other pieces in the works as well. Um, uh, a, uh, Hopefully, at the end of this year, I'll be shooting a film called The Woman King, which mm. I liken to a Black female Braveheart. Wow. Stars Viola Davis and Gina Prince, Prince Bifewood will direct. Wow. Um, I think it will be a very special piece. I'm very excited about that. So if you can see what I'm trying to do, um, I'm pushing representation. I'm in a very commercial way. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, trying to create content that's bold and exciting and can prove that different kinds of protagonists can still win at the box office um, and uh, having a really good time and feeling very supported by my company, Sony Pictures. That's wonderful. Well, that representation matters and we truly appreciate everything that you're doing. And thank you for spending your evening with us, Nicole. Thank you. Thank and you for having me. Yeah, and hope to see you again sometime. Bye. Bye. I don't know how to end this. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs>